Hey everybody, that's right. We are here at the Heinz History Center's new exhibit. It's called Pittsburgh's John Kane, the life and art of an American workman. And I am here to meet the president and CEO of the History Center, Andy Masick, for a great tour. Hey Andy. I'm so delighted that you're here to see the life and art of John Kane because he is a Pittsburgh treasure that a lot of people haven't heard of but he's one of the most revered self-taught artists in the world. Mm -hmm. He came to Pittsburgh in 1880, uh, but he remembered his Scottish roots. In fact, one of the first paintings that was accepted at the Carnegie International was a scene from the Scottish Highlands. And that kind of established him as a legitimate artist because in fact, he was a day laborer most of his life painting railroad cars and houses, working in mines and mills, but his, his real love was art. But he was completely self-taught. So Andy, John was really a true American workman and he had a tough life. He had a really tough life. In fact, tragedy seemed to follow wherever he went. Uh, his infant son died. John started to drink. In fact, they threw him into an insane asylum for a time. Uh, he had to reinvent himself after he lost his leg in a railroad accident. He got drunk one night, a switch engine ran him over, sliced off his left leg. As he lay in bed recuperating, he picked up artist brushes. Looking out the window, he started painting Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh that he had grown to love. He painted Aspinwall and Bloomfield and the Strip District. And the remarkable thing about John Kane is his Pittsburgh wasn't the smoky city. The smoke blew away and he painted in vivid colors that uh, brought the city and its people to life. At the same time, he was struggling. He carved himself a wooden leg. He went back to work. Before he lost his leg, he had been a boxer. He went three rounds with gentleman Jim Corbett. After he lost his leg, he got back in the ring with his wooden leg and kept boxing. That's how tough this guy was. He was a come from behind kind of guy and, and that's the kind of story Pittsburghers love. And this is the biggest painting of John Keynes, right Andy? It's his largest canvas and it's the last canvas he ever did. You know, Pittsburghers love learning about their neighborhoods mm -hmm. and there are other contemporary artists like Aaron Gorson and Sir Alfred East who painted some of the same subjects that Kane did. But in Kane's paintings, they're so vivid, they come to life. You know that Skunk Hollow with the Bloomfield Bridge in the background, that's a place that John Kane lived and worked. And Andy, at the History Center, you feel like you could just walk into the art. <laughs> you can, Selena. Our curators and exhibit designers have done a terrific job making John Kane's art come alive. And the great thing is there are loans from the Metropolitan Museum of Art and the Smithsonian and the Duquesne Club and the Carnegie Museum and 15 private collectors. It's more Kane art than has ever been in one place in history. Amazing. Well, thank you for the tour, Andy. And this will be around all the way until January 2023. That's you got right. a lot of time to check it out, everybody. That is so neat. Wait, where, where they walk into it? Where they it? walk into it, because I didn't see it coming. Right. And then you can be part of the art. It's, it's very, awesome. yeah, that's very cool. And I do love the colors. It wasn't a smoky yeah, city. It right. was these vibrant colors. It's like June, whenever the trees are like bright green. Yeah. yeah I love that. Really pretty. Thanks to Selena and Andy for that. Well, as part of a special program at the History Center, the authors of American Workmen, The Life and Art of John Kane, will share their inspiration for writing the book, and that is coming up tomorrow evening. And for more info, we have a link for you on our website, pittsburghtodaylive.com.